Four Mississippi cops were recently sentenced to a combined 95 years in federal prison for their part in a horrific attack on two black men in January 2023. The four white cops were a part of a group of six officers that brutally attacked two black men, Michael Jenkins and Eddie Parker. They beat these black men with tasers and sex toys and performed mock executions on them. All of this started on January 24, 2023, when a white person called the police and complained about two black men staying with a white woman. Then six officers who called themselves the Goon Squad showed up without a warrant and without any probable cause and began their terror on these black men. They proceeded to beat these men and tase them and used sex toys on them. They poured milk and chocolate syrup on them and then made them strip naked and shower together. One of the officers then took out his weapon and put it in Michael Jenkins' mouth and fired it. He shattered Michael's jaw and severed his tongue. The officers then planted drugs and weapons on them to try to cover up their actions. These officers were prosecuted and convicted in federal court for violating the civil rights of Michael and Eddie. But as bad as this case was, there's an even more horrific case from 80 years ago that made it possible for these four Mississippi cops to be tried and prosecuted in federal court for abusing these two black men's civil rights. It was the case of Robert Hall, who was a black man who was beaten to death by cops in Georgia in 1942 after he complained when the police took his weapon from him and he tried to get it back. Only, unlike the Mississippi case, the cops who beat Robert Hall to death were acquitted. This is actually a very, very, very important Supreme Court case that made it possible to hold the Mississippi cops accountable 80 years later and paved the way to sue cops in federal court for violating black citizens' rights. In late 1942, a 31-year-old black man named Robert Hall angered Georgia Sheriff Claude Screws. Sheriff Screws didn't like the fact that Robert owned a weapon and sent deputies to confiscate Robert's prized pearl handle 45. Robert felt that he had a constitutional right to have it and protested. He complained that it had been unlawfully taken from him and took his complaint before the grand jury. Now this only angered Sheriff Screws more. Sheriff Screws told the grand jury that if any black person had a weapon in his county, that he'd take it and he refused to return it back to Robert. Robert then hired a lawyer to write the sheriff a letter and demand that it be returned to him. On the day that the sheriff got the letter, a warrant mysteriously appeared charging Robert with stealing a tire. In January of 1943, Sheriff Screws and two other officers went to Robert's home. They handcuffed Robert and took him to the courthouse where they proceeded to beat Robert with a blackjack and bars. They then took out their weapons and fired at Robert and dragged his body across the courthouse lawn and threw him onto the jailhouse floor. Robert died right there. They beat Robert so badly that the undertaker later testified that his body was mutilated and skin was ripped off. Sheriff Screw said that Robert tried to attack them and the officers defended themselves. The local county prosecutor refused to prosecute the sheriff and the other officers. The U.S. Justice Department used the late 1800s Reconstruction Era statute that made it a crime for a public official to intentionally abuse someone's constitutional rights to charge the sheriff and the officers. Sheriff Screws and the other officers were indicted by the federal grand jury for taking Robert Hall's life. At their trial, they were found guilty. They appealed their convictions all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court. The sheriff and the other officers argued that they were not enforcing the law when they took Robert Hall's life because Georgia law would have prohibited them from taking Robert Hall's life without legal justification. The U.S. Supreme Court said that if you do something while acting as a police officer, you are acting in your official capacity. The court said that it doesn't matter if what you did was unlawful. However, the Supreme Court did overturn their convictions on a technicality. At the sheriff's second trial, he and the other officers were found not guilty. Sheriff Screws went on to be re-elected as sheriff and was later elected to the Georgia State Senate. Without the Screws case, the Mississippi officers would not have been able to be prosecuted in federal court because before the Supreme Court's ruling in the Screws case, states refused to prosecute cops who terrorized black people in black communities. And the federal government would always defer to the states to police themselves, which the states refused to do. Robert Hall did not get justice in 1942, but because of his death, the four Mississippi officers were able to be held accountable in 2024. I want to know your thoughts on this. What do you think about what happened to the two black men in Mississippi? What lessons can we learn from what happened to Robert Hall in 1942 and what the Mississippi cops did to the two black men? Drop me a comment down below and let me know what you think.